Hello there. This is just a quick tutorial on how to assemble a swing joint. Uh, we're going to be using funny pipe or um, poly pipe or swing pipe or um, I guess I should say poly because there's many different kinds of poly but um, we're going to use a swing pipe to be able to do it. Um, to make this, I'm going to make a short one which I already have a piece cut for it uh, but to cut it I would typically use tubing cutters or PVC ratchet cutters or um, with this, I mean, you can use a draw saw, you can use a hack saw, you can even use a uh, razor blade. It, well, be careful, don't cut your fingers with razor blade, but um, that is a, uh, there, there's many different ways to cut this because it's so soft. All right, <clears throat> so proper way, way to assemble a swing joint, uh, you want to get your, um, or get you two funny, uh, they're funny uh, 90s or funny elbows uh, that are half inch by funny pipe um or swing pipe barbed fittings um i got two of them here i actually don't have to teflon this one because this is a soft plastic that seals um this is a marlex uh, that is actually the, na the name brand um so what i wind up doing is putting it on hand tight um this also seals here there's a sprinkler head i'm only only using a two inch because i'm in a small area to be able to, to show this demo normally i would use a four inch um, again, it seals on itself as it goes, as you, you twist that on, this is acting like that Teflon does because this is a soft plastic. Um, all this is is what's called a street 90 because it's male threads by female threads here. Um, you can use just a street 90, you don't have to have a Marlex. Uh, there, you can use any combination you have to to be able to make these type of joints. What you want to do is you want it to be able to twist whichever direction it needs to if it ever has to move. So the whole point of having these fittings is so that they can they can twist as needed so all right so now i'm i'm just going to assemble this onto the lateral line um again this isn't in a yard um it's not outside this is inside so i can make this demonstration um uh, one thing by the way when you glue these t's you're going to want to have them on their side not facing up if they're facing up there's, if if someone is to use a shovel or step down really hard in an area where the, where the soil is weak because it wasn't compacted, this can break because of all the force coming down. Anyway, um, you just basically put the uh, the funny el or yeah funny elbow in, press this funny pipe on until it's all the way down to at least. Um, well, I should I will show you. There's a neck right here. You can see the barbs end here. If it's past this point, right here where my nail's at, you should be just fine. I typically try to push it almost to that little edge. It, once it gets to here, it's not gonna push any farther because it starts to expand out. Unless it's hot, you're not gonna be able to push it that far. I try to push it on as far as possible. They don't, I mean, even if they're only on part way, they don't slip off, but it's just good practice to make sure that you're not making weak fittings. Anyway, press this one on. You can spin it to help it bite down. Sometimes that will help depending on, like these fittings are Rainbird fittings and they actually have a spiral to help pull it down. In fact, I'll show you that spiral. But you can see on this that that spiral actually goes down kind of like threads, uh, so it does help. Um, anyway, um, it's made so that this can be moved in either direct, any direction it needs to so that it can be level with the soil when you set the soil up or when you, when you, don't do not leave these above ground by the way if your ground is here that's these are meant so that they can be set below the level of the turf you don't want to have them above ground because if the grass is here this is going to get run over by a mower or kicked or something's going to happen to it so yeah i would recommend setting them right at the level of the soil so that it's right flush with the top of this ring right here don't go over it just right about flush to the top of this ring right here and the last thing on a pop-up, unless you got dirt in the line, um, if you have dirt in the line, this is made so you can flush it or to be able to pick this up. What happens is that little um, flap right there allows the water and debris to escape without these threads dropping back down in here. If you drop it down in there, for example, like that, you're not going to pick it back out. You, you can either disassemble this to get it to, to press it back up and out or just use the tool they provided. Twist it down on, pick it back up, and then I use my fingers 
to hold this in place right here while I drop in a basket, twist on the nozzle, set the nozzle by this notch right here facing it faces uh, back and to the left. So that is the direction that the water is going to shoot coming out. So if we're trying to line it up with the camera, now it's shooting that way. And then in here, you see another little tiny notch. Hopefully you can see that, I don't know if you can. Let's see, there's a little tiny notch right there. Anyway, that little notch will, is the direction that it's going to face as it comes out this direction. So this one is adjustable which, uh, up to 360 if you wanted it to be. You can open it all the way up or just have it do clear down to even just a little, you know, little tiny angle. That's it. Thank you for listening to my tutorial. Please like and share.